Welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on over there for some mono white angels. This is a deck that I liked playing last format. They ended up being pretty fun and was pretty competitive. So basically what we're doing here is we are playing uh, a lot of two drops that, um, you know, different degrees. We got a Danto Vanguard, Tithe Taker, Takali Honor Guard, the new two drop, like usually those were our those were our ones before. The new two drop that we have now is Tomik as well, Distinguished Advocist. Basically what Tavik does is just being a, a two mana, two, three flying is just a very, very solid body. And so that's what it is. That's a good enough card. The whole land stuff, that doesn't really matter too much at all. Maybe that'll come up at times. Uh, it does prevent like your opponent from uh, tapping or untapping their lands with um, with Teferi, for example. Um, but we'll see if that that comes up too much. Uh, it does it does uh, make mean your mobilized districts can't be targeted. So that's that's a thing. So like they can't they can't target your mobilized districts when you have Tamik in play. So that could be a thing. Uh, so we got all of our two drops, and then we have our, our good aggressive three drops to back them up. A whole bunch of Gideons. That's the new card here. We played Benelish Marshall last format, but Gideon is awesome. I'm and uh, pretty excited to try Gideon here with the history of Benalia. And then we got all of our angels at the top end: Resplendent, Shalai, Lyra, uh, Angel of Grace as well. So it makes us. Uh, a lot better against the aggro decks, how we have this top end that usually trumps the aggro. Uh, also, to push forward our aggressive starts with our two drops are, of course, Ajani's. Got some Ixalan's Binding in for some removal. Got a whole lot more removal in the sideboard and different interaction for what whatever we need um, over in the sideboard. So, yeah, so that's our deck. Mono White Angels. Um, yeah, let's give it a try. At Rune Law Enforcer for the deck. I don't think it needs it. I don't I don't hate Rune Law Enforcer, but I I don't really know if it's better than anything else we we have here. Yeah, and we also be, because we're a monocolor deck, that's a good point. We do have a lot of uh, utility lands that help us out in different cases. I, I have 25 lands in here, 20 white sources, which is still give us plenty of white sources. Uh, but then we also have our five colorless lands to help out at different times. Which I think we should still have enough white sources. You know, having 20 white sources, that's a lot. Mm, we're going to put Shalai on the bottom. Selesnia Titans was a, a Selesnia mid-range deck uh, featuring a bunch of different creatures that had like six power and six, tough, six toughness, which is why I was referred to as Titans. Had Nullhide Ferox, uh, Tulsimer, and Oketra. Are we just playing against the elf deck? <laughs> so divide I don't think you really need divine visitation there's um, a Johnny doesn't help out. This a Johnny doesn't help out with the Divine Visitation. The only card that that would make that makes tokens is the History Banalia, and it's just not worth playing. Divine Visitation. Understand, I will lend you my strength. So if I attack 
with both. Oh, I should have just attacked with a 3-3. Maybe. Maybe not. Yeah, I should have attacked with a 3-3. I guess I traded with Paradise Druid and Knight of Autumn. I don't know. I like kind of be able to sit back. So they're just at one card in hand. They have so much mana. Basically, want to sit back and try to protect a Johnny. So if I would have attacked with both creatures and they just don't block, then they, they would have been able to attack back and kill a Johnny. Deliver us to victory. Maybe they're playing the Slesnia Titans deck we just got done playing. Capable of more than you assume. Okay. What do we want? Do we want to call the honor guards? So if it is that Selesnya deck, you're gonna take out a Danto Vanguards, bring in, um. An extra honor guard, some settles. Another binding. Tremina Johnny for another binding. I do have just a lot of things that cost four mana. <laughs> Spyglass for Null High Ferox. Tell him you do not get to You do not get to cast non creature spells ever again. I think if we lose this game, I'll likely be bringing back Adanto Vanguard on the play. Yeah, we're getting core set this summer. The modern set is, you know, not going to be legal and standard. That won't be on Arena or anything. That's like a that's just a supplemental set. The newest episode of Game of Thrones, it was pretty good. It, things went by really fast, but that's just how it is with three episodes left. 
Gotta cover so much stuff. Now there's only two more episodes. I don't want to give any spoilers, of course. But just saying that there's a lot of things happened. That doesn't seem like too much of a spoiler. Let's see Vivian. if you're worthy. Mobilize this trick. I really think this is this is the Selesnya Titans deck. I'm pretty sure. The mysteries of life are endless. Yeah, the two three flyer just has a really good body for two mana. It works well with like a Johnny. How a Johnny can bring it back. It's a good card to have before Gideon Blackblade, for example. It's it's just a it's just a pretty solid card. So I could, I could like binding the harpooner, and then kill the Vivian also. So I could like guarantee to get both of them off the battlefield. Um, but I like just having Gideon on the battlefield here, and we still get rid of the harpooner. They block. Yes, they get to keep Vivian, but. Pump the blast zone to two is isn't too special. Like taking an entire turn you think this early. Is kind? Like a, a really valuable turn of of getting ahead on the battlefield. That's just not what you want to be doing. I didn't live through hell to lose to you. I've seen puppies whine less than you. Looks like they're kind of just struggling with lands and looking for stuff to do. Hey, what's up, Doom Waffle? Thanks for that resubs. It's Todd. Keep on the great content. Sorry I've been on lately. Depression's been in full effect. Oh, I'm sorry. Man, I'm really sorry to hear that, Doom Waffle. We're always here to help. If you ever, you know, you ne ever, need, ever need anything, you just let me know. And everybody here in chat is here to help as well. 20 seconds of the day. But yeah, thanks, thanks for uh, staying on, staying with it. And you'll get through it. I am proud to fight by your side. Look how far you have come. I believe in you. All right, let's see. Use attack there. You attack there. <sighs> Curse the darkness Not yet. Well, our deck's been kind of looking, been looking pretty impressive so far. We curved out really well with uh, the Tamik on turn two, and then History Banalia into Gideon and, and then a Johnny. Like, this looks pretty nice. Let's go to attacks. We don't need to activate planeswalkers. All right. Unfortunately, they got stuck on lands. Unfortunately. All right, but we're one to know.
Yeah, that was... Titans versus Planeswalkers there. We didn't get to do too much angel stuff with our angel deck. We just played a resplendent angel. Just one white source. But if we don't draw the next one by turn three, we could Field of Ruin. Really hope we draw a white source here, just get to start slamming these history banalias. Alright, we did it. So yeah, we got 20 in the deck, like that's still fine, even with all these utility lands. Mind and body should move in unison. Like wind and wave. Meditate and prepare. History. This was overwhelming. Uh, Tameek's in the deck because it's a 2-mana two 2-3 two, flyer, and that's a good card. And it works well with Gideon and Ajani. It's a good 2-drop. That Thought Rager doesn't look so good. Do you got a Ritual Sit or a Cry of the Carnarium over there? Attack. I don't think our opponents learned their history lesson yet. <laughs> Alright, we'll get rid of Honor Guard. I mean, Honor Guard is... It is certainly fine against... Um, Hostage Shaker. And... I guess, you know, Nickel Bolus ability, but just going to get rid of those. Hmm. I kind of want to play Wanderer. To be able to exile Nicol Bolas, and if they have Rekindling Phoenix also. But, like, is that worth it? It's it's really narrow, like, only getting Bolas, basically. It's really narrow. I guess I should play the Spy Glass. I don't really like how Shalai matches up against Bolas and Lava Coil and all sorts of other stuff. I should play the Spyglass, though, for the Planeswalker Bolas, probably. Grixis usually struggles with artifacts. <laughs> Why would you not have a cat, Shrimp? Cats are great. What do you think, Hawkeye? You think you're pretty great?
I have two puppies as well. Got two doggos and one kitty cat. Hawkeye's like scared of the dogs though, so Hawkeye stays here in the bedroom, the dogs stay in the living room. Oh right, they have Bedevil. Bedevil kills artifacts quite well. And I guess so does Angrass Rampage. And Hostage Taker. Alright, I don't need the Spyglass in here. Waiting on the opponent. Which one you want to do? Play first, play second. We did see our opponent play Dispersal last game. I mean, they played Discovery, but Dispersal is an enchantment removal spell. Cause five mana. All right, Tuno. We've had a pretty good day today here. Yes, absolutely, Coffee Master. All right, we got a donation for a Wizard's Prowess deck. Yeah, send me the list and let me know what, what day do you want me to play it. You know, if you have like a certain day and a time slot for second, third, or fourth that you want me to play it, you just let me know and I'll play it then. Right, I'm writing it down now. Teamer deck, huh? I think I'm going to play this Tithe Taker against this Teamer deck. I still haven't played the, the Feather deck yet. Any day this week. Yeah, you can just put the list in chat. Yep, I'll save it for you. That'll be good. Ugh. No land. Land. I guess history kills faster than Gideon. So I'm going to go with this history. Make sure you put like, make sure you, you're uploading the list to like a, a website, you know, like Goldfish or something and put in the link in chat. Okay, that's, I was scared of that. Yeah. I, Well, that'll do it. Look.
All right, gotta get all these Ixalan's bindings in. Wander, yes please. Demystify. And I guess probably Spyglass. Maybe Spyglass. Do I really want this by glass? Yeah, basically be for Ascanta. Uh, Planeswalker they have would be like Ral. It's basically for Ascanta. Nah, I'm not going to play it. Let's go with this. <laughs> it's all good, Coffee Master. Alright, there you go. Cool. All right, I saved that. All right, nice start here. I have not tried Abzan Angels with a new set. This is actually, I think this is the first time we've played an Angels deck since the new set has come out, I believe. No, today I, I was just playing the Constructed Cues today. I didn't do any ranked today. No, what day do you want me to do chromatic chromatic black there, Morgan? When do you want me to play it? Rig me with the Twitch Prime sub. Thanks, Rig me. Alright, cool. Yeah, I can do it tomorrow. They have Fiery Cannonade. I'd, I really should just play that post combat. <laughs> of course they did. Because why not? CMC for a greater? Nope. Prime day for justice. Your light will cleave the darkness. This murmur mystic is going to be a really big problem. I don't know what the upside is of waiting for me to untap and then casting shock. Don't really know what the upside of it was there. Share in my light. There are certainly 
uh, white indestructible cards that I could be playing. Sheltering light. Yeah, like unbreakable formation. There's certainly a few of them. Alright, can we draw land, please? Please land. Ugh. Unfortunate. One less feet to fight. Yeah, the Celestia Titans deck was a lot of fun to play. It was definitely better whenever you have Vivian. Yeah, Wanderer would have been really good against Niv. And just even like this deck with like their their burn spells and stuff. Um Yeah, Ixalan's binding the Niv would have been nice. Basically, drawing a land would have been nice. It was probably the list that you, you found on Aetherhub. It was from Borderland Ranger. Uh, Borderland Ranger donated for it, and he had his list up on... on uh, Aetherhub there. I don't have it up on, I do not have the Titans deck up on Stream Decker because I have the link that I'm using in the, on the YouTube video and everything, the link that I used earlier was the link to Aether Hub because Borderland Ranger wrote an article about it, the deck as well. So uh, there's the YouTube video on the deck and that the deck has the, the YouTube video has the deck, the deck list in the description. Yeah, Resplendent Angel of Soren is definitely good. I don't... I don't know if I played those together quite yet, but yeah, those are... Those just work really well together, for sure. Alright, we got there. Even with kind of our mishap of getting another token at Fiery Cannonated when I didn't need to. Game three. Baffling End doesn't exile anything in our opponent's deck, I don't believe. The two creatures they played last time, it doesn't. Like, it would get rid of one of the tokens, but don't really need it. Definitely like our hand here. What am I leading with? <clears throat> hmm. Let's go with this Vanguard. Attacks a little harder than the Tithe Taker. Ooh. I march into battle as your champion. Speaking of attacking hard, you my strength. Great draw. Love it. 
<clears throat> Gideon, maybe the best draw. Yeah, that was, that was the best draw we could have there. I think that's even better than history with being able to take up towards the six loyalty. Yeah, Gideon is just really, really solid. As we saw even that last game, the reason why we won was because Gideon was able to exile N Niv Mizzet for us. Prepare for battle. So if they want to cast Chemistry's Insight, it's gonna they're gonna have to do it right now. Morale's outburst. Yep, gotta do it right now. Yeah, not to my cool Tamik. The Rouse outburst that three damage basically is nothing with the Vanguard. Gaining the three there. Thanks to Gideon. All right. Very impressive. Danta Vanguard into Gideon into uh, Tithe Taker plus Tamik. That's pretty nice. You know, we don't have just like a ton of angels in this deck. You know, we have a good amount, but I don't, I don't really know what else to call the deck besides, you know, like the mono white angels. Even though it's like. Gideon and a Johnny. It's like the the backbone of the deck are the tw the twelve two drops, and then Gideon history and a Johnny to back those up. But the the topping are the angels. Mono white allies. <laughs> Mono white walkers. Bedside Tiger with the Twitch Prime sub. Welcome back. Thanks, Bedside Tiger. Sub number 24 of the day. Don't really want to shock in here for Gideon, necessarily. Because a 2-mana two 2-3 two, flyer is really good. That's why we're playing Tamik. So yeah, that's why we're playing it for the stats. And that's just a, a solid card. Evasion is very powerful. It works really well with both these Gideons, or sorry, both these Planeswalkers with Gideon and a Johnny. A Johnny could bring it back or just start, you know, ticking it up at all. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be Mono White Devotion. We could call this deck.
Gideon Jura, at your service. I believe in you, friend. Yeah, real good against Diva Sanity. We also have, I mean, we do have, like, there are some things that, like, the, the land stuff isn't nothing that Tamik does. For example, if you play against Teferi, you, your opponent doesn't get to untap the the lands with Teferi. Um, if, we, if we have our mobilized districts, they can't target your mobilized districts. I tried my best. We're going to need to bring in these four baffling ends from our sideboard to help us out here in this matchup. All right, Matthew. Yeah, try it out. Let me know how it goes. Dozen, that, that. All right, get all these Adanto Vanguards out. Um, two Gideon, one Johnny. Still need to get rid of two more cards. I guess another Johnny. And I guess another Gideon. It's one of the things that play defense. Correct, Gideon can't block, but it would, if you have like your other, if we have like Resplendent and Seraph and that kind of stuff in, in play, playing Gideon and giving one of them lifelink is, is just really nice. Because uh, even if. You know, it's it's not something we want to play early, but Gideon can be a good card later on like that. And yeah, even if they're just, you know, attacking Gideon for a bunch, that's them not dealing damage to me. Um Honestly, maybe I should be playing Settle here. Maybe we have so many fours though with bringing in Shalai, Wanderer, and the extra bindings. Temple Garden. Bum, 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 bum. Hopefully we draw a History Banalia to play on turn three here. Hmm, not quite. Stop. I 
All right, definitely love Shalai here in this matchup. Hopefully no Lava Coil. Hopefully they have they need two spells to deal with it. July plus spark double. Yep. Or Shalai plus Lazav that's copied to Shalai. That's another way to have double Shalai. Or Shalai put plus Tajik. Tajik prevents all the damage that would be dealt to Shalai. And then Tajik has Hexproof. Shalai plus the Wanderer. Yep. That one, though, they get get to just attack the Wanderer and get rid of that. Yeah, my, my Nia Legends deck that I played last format could do the the, the Shalai Tajik combo. Yeah, that is it's an absurd one. <laughs> His name is Butterscotch? No, it's Hawkeye. Yeah, just like Sten's, Sten's had it. Hawkeye. I haven't thought about butterscotch in forever. Like I just kind of forgot that butterscotch is a thing. I, even, I don't remember the last time I thought about butterscotch anything. I guess they were scared to settle. No, there's one wander in the sideboard in this deck. I used to really like whenever whenever I was a kid, I liked ice cream with the butterscotch syrup. And yeah, I would get that at uh so to have at my grandmother's so they bolted shalai That was a really, really good light up the stage for them. They have to not only kill the Shalai, but now they have to have something for the mobilized district. They do not. They could have. They would have just skewered and saved the Wizard's Lightning. 
We definitely could have. I'm not sure what you mean about Citadel combo decks, but I have an Abzan Citadel deck that's really nice. Um, I can find it on my Stream Decker page. Here, this list here. What was the main reason to not... Okay, never mind. Okay, good. He figured out the answer. But I guess if somebody has that question maybe on YouTube, they're wondering why I didn't activate the Mobilized District for blockers is because we didn't have the mana to. Cost too much mana. No Steamkin. Get out of here. No Steamkin for you. Default's going to be annoying. My assistants are painfully sloppy. Come on. Should play the Temple Garden. So the planes. I was kind of thinking that I was going to be doing Tithe Taker plus History or plus Resplendent. And then realized that I should probably just blast zone away these Chain Whirlers into Bolts. We'll see how scared they are of attacking. All right, I need all four of these lands to put the counters on the blast zone. So actually, yeah, no, we're good. <sighs> I'll see myself out. <laughs> yeah, Isaac Johnson, Matthew you got you a sub there. rid of one of these devils.
All right, no burn spells, no burn spell, no burn spell, no burn spell. Don't kill Resplendent. Don't do it. Oh, this is so close. We're so close to stabilizing. Blast Zone was clutch. Getting rid of two Chain Whirlers and that Tabalt. We're so close to stabilizing. No! Okay. We're really close again. A burn spell kills us, though. But they have another 3 damage burn spell. Alright, that's not a 3 damage burn spell. Alright. We have stabilized. We're still alive. We certainly have not won this yet, but... They could just draw another, like, if they just draw a burn spell this next turn that kills the Resplendent Angel, like, the game's not over. At all. You know, they could, they could just draw Frenzy, you know, like, we... But we're not dead. Ooh. Please don't kill my Resplendent Angel. Ugh! Tilt! My friend is here to help your pain. All right, it's Binding the Phoenix. And we don't have to like, you know, we're not gonna actually gain life anyway this turn because we're not activating the Resplendent Angel. Wow, they just oh, took all of that? I feel like death. All right. There we go. Stabilized. 4 and 0. Oh. Mono white angels. We didn't even draw Lyra there. You're really liking this deck? Yeah, this deck is is really solid. This is a solid deck here. I think that the Gideon was a really big addition to this deck. All right, final boss time. Let's get that final boss playlist. Third time in a row we are facing the final boss tonight. Jeff. Jeff the car with the Twitch Prime sub. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for the support there. Get your final boss emotes in the chat as well. Hey, Jeff. This is just a pretty solid deck. It's just filled with good cards all over the place.
There you go, X, Y, L, R. Love it. Ooh, mono white. Good. Love drawing the land. We want to just hit our land drops to be able to get up to Lyra Dawnbringer. Hopefully, that's that's what we that's what we really like to be able to do. Lyra should help us take over this game as long as our opponent doesn't have a Conclave Tribunal for it. Hmm. Start making them pay life for this Vanguard. I'm gonna just be blocking. Okay, I love it. I like them using that now and not, you know, after you're not with the Dawnbringer. So that's that's good. Right, let's go to Meek Tithe Taker. They're down to just one card left. Really hoping that card's not another Conclave Tribunal. As long as it's not, I think we win this. All right, that's good. Draw land, draw land. Draw land. Uh, well, I'll block that thing. At instant speed, thank you. Were they trying to like pass turn and not attack and they accidentally attacked? Was that a thing that just happened? I don't know. So I do not want my vanguards. We're getting rid of those. I'm not sure what I think about Ixalan's Binding. I feel like if we Ixalan's Binding a Conclave Tribunal, that would be good, but otherwise it's kind of expensive. Uh, Gideon Blackblade and Ajani are not particularly amazing for us. Maybe one Gideon to a Johnny. I think I'd probably rather have the binding than the Gideon. No gum. I want the other binding over one of these other Ajani's. No, let's go with this. 
Yeah, I like I like a Johnny's ability to get like any of our two drops back, or like whenever the the battlefield stalls out, our Johnny's can take over. I didn't see the new Homecoming trailer. I did not. When is the Wanderer good? Uh, it's good against Red, with like their direct damage stuff and how they have like Rekindling Phoenix. It's also good against uh, big green monster decks like Gruul. It's also good against uh, Is it Drakes with their Crackling Drakes and stuff. You want Wanderer there? I have, yeah, good against Gates, for sure. Yep, Gates with all their big creatures. I am I have the green lands because of Shalai. Shalai has an activated ability that costs green mana. I don't have any green cards, but I just have the green lands for that. Yeah, we played against Team Wreck earlier, brought in Wanderer there. Trade a Tithe Taker for a Lawn Rune Enforcer? Yes, please. Thank you. Go to seven for a Splendid and Tithe Taker? Yeah, I think we can do that. Some of these creatures had vigilance. <laughs> That's Tamik just is a it's a good creature has a has a good body. That's an aggressive attack right there. You block there. You block here, and you two block here. I don't know if I need to throw that token in front of the Dauntless Bodyguard or not, honestly. Do not fear, my friend. Mm. Which one? Tamik, Tithe Taker. We'll get Tithe Taker. Fight again. Yeah, the the abilities are odd, but they're they're not nothing. Like we play like Mobilized District, where they can't they can't target Mobilized District. Uh there's different cards like Teferi that untaps lands where you can't untap lands with Tamik out. Like it's not nothing, but it's very marginal. It's it's things that don't come often come up very often.
Hey, great job, dice removal. Way to go. Yeah, and it's good against Shock, Cry of the Carnarium, all that kind of stuff. Moment of Craving. All that. Be strong. Right, I'm definitely liking where we're at in this game right now. Just hopefully no Benelish Marshall or anything like that. Um, like another pump effect, like an unbreakable formation would have been really rough. Nope. So they should be sacking the, the Dauntless Bodyguard to protect the Benelish Marshal. Which means that I'm not blocking the Dauntless Bodyguard. Wow. They did not sacrifice. Okay. And that's game. There we go. A 5-0. Monolite Angels felt really strong, honestly. Yeah, this deck felt really strong. You know, like, we had a lot of good stuff against the aggro decks. Um... Especially like after sideboarding when we have all these baffling ends plus like just these like the angels with the baffling ends with some good defense from tithes taker honor guard uh, Helping out quite a bit there. We felt really good against the aggro decks and then against like the Spell heavy decks. We just have a lot of really good two mana creatures that are hard for them to deal with like vanguard tithes taker uh, You know even to gets th those beats in and then backing them up with Gideon and a Johnny and history you know, like Gideon History of Johnny, like that's some really good backup there. And against that's those spell heavy decks. Um, you know, we got like Field of Ruin to disrupt as Kanta, uh, some mobilized districts. There were some extra attackers. We did use like a mobilized district to kill a, a red opponent that didn't really realize it. Like for lethal, they didn't leave anything back for it. We used a blast zone to blow up uh two chain whirlers and a Tabalt. So that's pretty sweet. We have the Archer of that can help us draw cards in a long matchup, too. We have a lot of really good stuff here on this. Hey, what's up? Thanks, Morris. We have a lot of good things here. Sub number 26 on the day. Yeah, Orzov Angels is definitely good, too. Because, um, yeah, so the question is, what about Orzov Angels with Soren? Yeah, the other thing you get with so besides Soren... Uh, which Soren's definitely good. Uh, you get Seraph for the Scales, which Seraph of the Scales is amazing. And then you also have cards like Dispark, Mortify, um, that are really solid cards too. Oath of Kai, if you want that for some more life gain. Um, but yeah, no, this is just a white deck. I just have like these these green lands for Shalai Pump. It's it's come up at times. It didn't really come up today in these leagues, but that's what I have there. Um, Black doesn't really give you another great. Two drop. Um, I like this Tamik though. Two three flyer. I like that card. And I like how you get all these utility lands. Yeah, I, I liked this deck. But yeah, black white angels of course gives you a lot of other cool things as well. Yeah, this worked out really well. It's nice how you know we have twenty white sources. We just weren't really having to worry about like, uh, do we have enough white and do we have like another color and all that kind of stuff. And get the utility lands. This deck is solid. Very solid. All right, so if you're watching this video later on YouTube, I hope you enjoyed Mono White Angels there. Give it a try. Uh, but thanks for watching. Uh, mono, yeah, thanks for watching Mono White Angels, and I will see you for another video.